G'day, my name is Chris Mouflard and I'm a project engineer at Vico Software. Welcome to the Production Controlling Video Training Series Level 2. In this vignette, we're going to discuss retrieving actuals from the field, subcontractors, and superintendents. The aim of this vignette is to teach you about collecting actuals using architectural plans and control charts. We'll also learn about using custom views and how we print and distribute using control charts. Updating your Vico Schedule Planner project is somewhat different to the traditional manner of actualization of schedule. What you'll need when actualizing on a weekly basis are the actual start, finish dates, or a percentage complete. You can also use an actual quantity installed, but this may become cumbersome to track as multiple overhead trades install their work. You also need actual manpower per activity. This is imperative in calculating the actual man hours contributed to completing a task. This will directly affect the forecasting ability of Schedule Planner. Your best sources of information include superintendents, subcontractors, site walks so that you can validate the control chart yourself, and daily reports, both from supers and subs. Utilizing each one of these sources will give you a well-rounded understanding of the actuals that you need to enter into the control chart on a weekly basis. To give you a better understanding, we're gonna walk through this flow chart. Our first step will be to prepare and distribute the control charts. It's also important that we determine a reporting date. Our next step will be to complete the control chart actuals entry which will be done by the sub. On a weekly basis, you should email an empty control chart only featuring the subcontractor's activity so that they may actualize this information. We'll see an example shortly. The subcontractor will then hand over the completed control chart to the area of trade superintendent. The superintendent's responsibility is to review and validate the information that the subcontractor has provided. This step is vital to ensure the accuracy of the information is correct. The quality of information going in will directly impact the quality of the forecasts and reports that you produce based off that information. When the superintendent validates those entries, and if the entries are incomplete, they'll have to go back to the subcontractor or the superintendent will have to make a determination on behalf of the subcontractor. However, if the entries are valid, we can move over and have the superintendent email or hand over the data to the production engineer. It will be the production engineer's responsibility to ensure that all the fields are accurately entered, which again include the actual start and finish dates, days not work, percentage complete actual manpower per activity. Once this information has been handed over to the production engineer, they can now spend their time entering in those weekly actuals. Finally, they will be able to analyze the data and produce weekly production reports, which will ultimately result in control actions being taken. This is an example of an actual control chart from a project. What we can see here is the subcontractor has highlighted areas of work by percentage and date when it is completed. Printing out the control chart in an 11 by 17 format, either landscape or portrait, will enable the ease of the subcontractor to provide this data. Further, the subcontractor is given a very quick and easy look in to how they are progressing through the project based on the different colors of the control chart. In Schedule Planner, let's head to the side navigation bar and open the control chart function. In our custom view drop-down list, we can now establish different custom views for each of the project participants that we will be sending control charts to. So, in this instance, I've included a superintendent's control chart list for each of the different superintendents that exist on the project that are controlling a scope of work. We also have the different subcontractors who are also controlling that sort of work. If we enter into one of our superintendent's control charts, we can quickly gain a status of all the different activities and locations that they are controlling. On a weekly basis, it is important that these are delivered to each of the different project participants, whether it's a super or a subcontractor, so that they can fill it out and return it so that you have the ability to actualize your schedule. It is recommended to use Control P or use File and drop down, and use a PDF printer like Primo or Qt PDF to print out your PDF, to print out your control chart. Enter the properties section, advanced, select the 11 by 17, and often this will provide the best result. And this will provide the best result for printing control charts in a readable, usable manner. In this vignette, you have been given information about the different methods to collect actuals data. We've also learned that it is important to print the control chart as a PDF and email that file. We've also learned the importance of the different custom views for each of the subcontractors and superintendents so that 
you can receive their feedback on a weekly basis.